Now that we've uh, completed our integration with the payment gateway we're going to be using to accept payments, uh, we're going to flip over to campaigns and uh, create our campaign from there. So on the left hand side you're going to look for the campaigns menu item and then just click on campaigns at the top. And of course I've got no campaign so we can create campaign here or we can click new campaign on the top here. Alright, so the campaign, just enter in a name for your campaign and hit save. <coughs> Alright, so this is your campaign settings, so it's going to ask for a couple of things. The first thing it's going to ask for is the logos for your campaigns. Um, I do recommend that you have something here, it will definitely make a big difference for, to your branding. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and upload those now by clicking on the upload photo. Um, just so that you're aware of the differences, um, it asks for a light logo and a dark logo. And the reason why it does this is because there are some places where a light logo is required, where it, the logo needs to be light against a dark background. And in other cases, there's a dark logo required where um, you're going to have the logo against a light background. So <clears throat> that's why it asks for two different ones. One is for the light contrast and the other is for the dark, dark contrast. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and upload those. Alright, so we're going to upload the light logo. <clears throat> um, try and be aware of the pixel size it's asking for. Uh, your logo does need to fit into these dimensions as best as possible. So 700 by 160 and try to upload a logo that actually is transparent rather than one that has a background on it. Uh, it'll just make life easier when you're trying to configure your templates and so on. Um, <clears throat> so I do recommend that you use a transparent background logo and um, make sure that you conform to these dimensions or else it's not going to look very good. Alright, so once you've got those logos ready for upload, it's going to ask you for a default language. Uh, so what's the default language of your checkout page? Of course, in my case, it's uh, English. And we can sh uh, decide whether or not we actually want to show our campaign in the PayKickstart Marketplace. Um, so if you do want to do that, you just need to give it a uh, choose a category for it. So <clears throat> arts or business education or uh, and so on so um, we do have an internet marketing section here as well so there would be social media marketing in this case I would uh, add it to the social media marketing campaign uh, but at the moment I'm actually not going to include it in the marketplace so I'm just gonna remove that from social media marketing and I'm actually gonna just turn that off um, the base currency, so the base currency, um, this is, uh, bear in mind that um, this currency um, essentially determines which payment gateways you're going to be able to um, link to this campaign. So if you've built a payment gateway for US dollars and then you choose US dollars in the campaign, then those are the gateways that, that are going to show here. If you've added a gateway in Euro and you try to choose US dollar here it's not going to match and so it's not going to let you link that integration that payment gateway to this campaign okay so in my case it is US dollars and um, I am using PayPal and I'm gonna make it the primary you can also uh, use a credit card um, in this case I do not have a, a separate payment gateway for credit cards you could use but for example Stripe or Authorize.net to process credit cards directly from inside of the checkout page but since I have not integrated one it's not going to allow me to choose that option uh, however if I did have a payment gateway like Stripe or Authorize.net or even Braintree to process credit cards directly on the checkout form then I would be able to choose that gateway here as well and I would be able to give my clients the option of choosing between PayPal or credit card on the checkout page so that's definitely a recommended option if that is available to you and then you can also choose which one the checkout page is going to show um, as the primary by uh, choosing this checkbox here so if you wanted to choose a credit card as your primary uh, when the checkout page loads you just make this you just click here to make it primary on the checkout page 
okay one click upsells um, <clears throat> one click upsells basically allows um, pay uh, pay kickstart to um, store the payment profile that's created in your payment gateway and then use that profile in future to charge uh, additional transactions okay so it's very powerful but also you need to be very sure that your customers understand very clearly what they're actually paying for so what actually happens in that situation is the customer may enter their credit card information or maybe via Braintree uh, they might uh, use their PayPal information and um, and then every subsequent sale in your sales funnel after they've processed the front-end offer successfully uh, will actually um, use the um, the same payment profile and your customer doesn't have to keep entering their payment information over and over again in each step in your funnel so it's very powerful it's very useful uh, for conversions uh, you get a much lower drop-off rate on the checkouts because there isn't actually a checkout form in that case in your in your um, OTOs and lower down in the funnel it's only the front end that has a checkout form so it's a very powerful system and I highly recommend you use it if you do have those other gateways unfortunately with your normal standard PayPal that option is actually um, not available because uh, PayPal actually requires the customer to go and authorize each individual transaction one by one uh, but if you are using Braintree and then and you're using Braintree's PayPal integration uh, that does work through PayPal but conventional PayPal like this that I have here uh, unfortunately one click upsells will not work for that alright so I may as well just click disable here it actually has no effect in this case because I don't have a credit card processor either Okay, so um, <clears throat> the secret key here is basically um, a key which allows you to um, to accept uh, IPN messages, instant payment notification messages on the back end, um, and usually a developer you would hire a developer to perhaps. Um, uh, you know build a custom integration you might have a custom membership platform or a custom uh, integration service which pay kickstart doesn't natively support and in those cases you can uh, give the developer secret key and a URL to the IPN documentation for pay kickstart and they would be able to build a custom integration so pay kickstart would send a message each time there's a sale or a failure or a rebuild or anything like that even a subscription cancellation um, to that uh, IPN service that your developer can build for you and then uh, that service can determine what's the best course of action uh, with whichever integration it is you're dealing with okay we do have of course uh, standard uh, Zapier um, uh, webhooks as well so you can integrate with Zapier and with Zapier as you know each zap you can integrate with hundreds of different services so you don't have to go the IPN route with a custom developer if Zapier supports the inter the platform that you are uh, most interested in then you could use uh, Zapier to create a zap for all these different events here for a new order a failed transaction or refunds and so on and um, and when you do that uh, you put the webhook URL in here and when you do that um, PayKexit will fire off to this URL and Zapier will then uh, once you've created that zap it will do whatever you've told that zap to do uh, you know based on each of these um, different webhooks so uh, there's plenty of documentation on this uh, we'll provide you with URLs so that you can uh, go through them and you can um, uh, go in more detail on how to set that up but in my case I don't need any of this so we're just going to move on um, <clears throat> webhook failure notifications if for whatever reason uh, you have any kind of integration issue with any of the integration services or your IPN or even Zapier or whatever uh, pay kickstart will alert you to that so it will actually send you an email saying hey uh, we couldn't um, we couldn't uh, get a successful response from X service and it will try to give you as much information as it received from that service so that you can then go ahead and debug why that's happened so I would recommend you leave that on um, and then transaction notifications so these are basically all your emails that go out uh, for each event um, so when your uh, affiliates make a sale they'll get notified um, or a refund they'll also get notified vendors it's the same thing and then of course your bio notifications so these are all the different notifications that you could be sending to your buyers or that PayKix will automatically send. Um, <clears throat> PayKixLot will send these emails as support at PayKixLot.com 
but uh, when if a customer does actually reply to that email the email will reply to your support email address over here it's really important you need to have at least the URL or the email but uh, you know um, you do need to have at least one contact source all right so um, we put an email address in over here for the time being. If you have a uh, support desk that you that you manage, you can put the URL in here as well. Um, and so, um, when these emails get fired off, um, when a customer does reply to those emails, um, it will th those replies will come to the email address you specify here. Um, if you don't want to use the default pay kickstarts notifications, you can disable them or you can turn off specific ones and you could potentially build uh, your own uh, email system uh, using your uh, IPN system here as well if you prefer. Okay, so um, you can enter a refund period here. So if um, most people will put use a 30 day refund period or a 60 or a 90 day refund period and uh, PayKickSod wants to know what the refund period is going to be in general for this campaign uh, because that will then um, also help it to help you manage when to pay your affiliates. So affiliates that do not um, get an instant commission, that you don't want to get an instant commission, those affiliates will be held uh, for the refund period and then um, PayKixot will alert you when that refund period has lapsed and those commissions and you can pay those commissions. It won't do it for you automatically unless you ask it to but it will alert you after that period has lapsed so that you're able to determine which affiliates are um, due their commissions. Okay, and then if I scroll down here a little bit more, this is the affiliate program. So, uh, of course, you can completely outright disable that, and that basically means that um, no other uh, pay kickstart users will be able to promote your product. But if you do enable it, um, then um, you're able to pay uh, affiliates uh, commission when they drive traffic to your um, to your campaigns and and make sales. Uh, on your behalf so they will then get a, a commission for that and these are the settings f uh, on how to deal with that so <clears throat> you'll see here if, ena if it's enabled uh, you get a unique request URL so this is where uh, if you create a JV page you would grab this URL and uh, attach it into your JV page and affiliates can then click on that button and they will be sent to pay kickstart to either sign up or log in and request to promote your product Okay. Um, commissions tier one and two, so um, it's a pretty advanced commission system that PayKickSot has built in. You can actually have um, affiliates and affiliates that were referred by other affiliates. And um, the tier one is the normal one. Most people use tier one and they'll give about 50% in general. Uh, commission tier two is, uh, uh, if you enable it, basically allows um, second tier affiliates allows other affiliates to give um, new affiliates a link to sign up with and then when those new affiliates make sales uh, the affiliate that referred them will make a a, a commission as well so for example uh, you might have your second tier affiliates set to 10% so when they refer other affiliates to promote then those affiliates will make 50% and the person who referred them to your to your campaign will also make 10% on the traffic that this this affiliate has actually sent you um, you can also change the commissions ba uh, just for the rebuilds so instead of using um, the tier 1 and tier 2 commissions you would actually use um, they would actually use the commission um, from these rebuild options when you've got a subscription product and that subscription uh, fires you know a rebuild transaction on a monthly basis or however often you've set that up so if you want to change that um, say for example you want to do you know 70% on the front end sale but then only give 30% on your rebuilds you can go ahead and set that up uh, to do that Okay, so um, quite a lot of flexibility. Um, you can also um, set up a, a URL um, uh, specifically for second tier affiliates. So when they click on a link, um, it can send them to a unique URL uh, like a JV page instead of directly to request to promote. So uh, you might want to put your JV page URL in here as well um, so that instead of ending up directly here when your second tier affiliate actually sends a link off to, to your first tier affiliate they end up on this page you could actually have it set up so that it will end up on this JV page that you define over here. 
Okay. Uh, membership services. We haven't set up any membership services, but uh, PayKickstart does um, uh, support quite a few of them. And um, so what you could actually do here is, you know, if you're using, say, Wishlist or uh, Member Mouse or a Fresh Member, what you want to do here is uh, set up your membership service so that when, um, you know, you make a sale, the... Um, the system will automatically create that user in your membership platform. Okay, so uh, for for my purposes, I don't need that. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit save here. All right, and there we go. Our logos are uploaded, um, and you know all our settings have been saved correctly. And so once you have your campaign set up, we need to start adding products to that campaign, and that we'll do in the next video.